doesn't like a good 4th of July fireworks show? I mean, I feel like nothing's more American than hanging out on the 4th of July at your county park and watching the best fireworks show that in person or on TV. Uh, the Washington DC usually has a pretty spectacular fireworks show. Um, but as a chemist, we wonder how do fireworks actually get all those crazy colors and why do they have those different kind of explosion patterns? So hopefully this video, I can answer some of those questions, some of those, some parts of those questions for you. Um, so when we think about the a basic firework, maybe most of you have at some point gone to a black cat's shop and bought something, uh, some type of firework. Uh, but the basic components of a firework are a fuse that you'll light or the lighter, right? And the fuse essentially is hooked up to black powder or gunpowder, which is uh, KNO3 sulfur and charcoal. So potassium nitrate, sulfur and charcoal, that's our gunpowder. Uh, and then the different fireworks have different uh, additional components within them based on what the specialty of that firework is. Um, colors. Uh, fireworks are given from ex the electrons in metals being excited to higher energy states and then relaxing back down to their normal level. Uh, when they relax, they emit a photon of light, which is energy uh, that is in, uh, honestly, in the visible spectrum. So for example, a uh, red color firework, uh, the metal could be either strontium chloride or lithium chloride. So an electron in either strontium or lithium uh, will absorb energy from the big bang explosion from the gunpowder going off and that electron will jump up to a higher state and then relax back down to its normal state and when it relaxes it releases a little bit of a little photon of red light. Uh, if your fireworks colored green uh, that's copper chloride so copper the metal here is copper copper uh, an electron in the copper uh, electron cloud would jump up to a higher order energy state uh, of kind of absorbing the bang from the explosion. And then when it relaxes back down to its ground state or its normal state, it releases a photon of light that has a green wavelength. So that's kind of basically how fireworks get their colors. Uh, pictorially, how does that look if we try to represent these electrons, you know, jumping up, jumping down? Uh, so remember that, zoom in a little bit here. So remember our picture of, uh, an, a of an atom. Uh, here we have the nucleus and normally, I'm gonna use a different color. Normally, um, this would be our Big Bang Theory atomic nuclei here. So nucleus in the center and then these lines always represent the electrons that are surrounding the nucleus, okay? Uh, but really, uh, you can also think of it as these the electrons are in layers around the nucleus and there are higher energy levels outside of the nucleus and we call those we call those excited states all right so maybe the ground state is this um, inner circle in my little picture representation so that would be my ground state i'm going to say gs there uh, and then these two uh, levels outside those could be potentially excited states so excited states. A way that we usually represent this in a linear fashion instead of using that picture is we show that we have our ground state that's at the bottom and then we draw lines, uh, horizontal lines above that and those represent uh, higher excited states that the electrons could jump up into. Uh, and the way that we represent electrons in these types of images is we do this half arrow. And it doesn't matter why we do that, but that's just what we do. <laughs> Uh, take Chem 111 and we'll tell you why we do half arrows, but it's all right, we're in Chem 100. So, so we're going to represent one electron as this uh, half arrow here. Okay, so we're, well, I'm a, a barium molecule in a firework and I had just got, the fuse got lit, so it's propelling up into the sky and the fuse finally runs into the gunpowder, kablooey, that releases a massive amount of energy. And some of the electrons that are zipping around me, because I'm a barium nucleus, uh, they absorb that energy. And so how we show that is here we come, right? Energy is light. So there's my little squiggly line. And you could even, if you wanted to say HV for photon, remember in an earlier video, that's how we depict 
uh, that's our shorthand for a photon of light. So our light comes in and hits an electron in the ground state. And what it does is it jumps up into an excited state. So in that process, maybe I'll use a different color here. Uh, this process of jumping, well, purple's not that different, is it? <laughs> the process of jumping up into a higher excited state is called uh, absorption. Uh, right, that, that electron is absorbing that energy. Okay, and then, I mean, it can't stay in this higher energy excited state forever. Everything wants to settle back down to its happy ground state. So when that electron falls back down to its ground state, guess what it does? It releases a photon of light. And since I'm a barium molecule, barium is a it has a way, the photon of light that is released uh, is, in the, is in the red wavelength. So it's around 700-ish uh, nanometers is the wavelength of light that it would emit. So, and this is called emission. Okay. So we have absorption, right? Sometimes it's also called excitation. So it's excitation and emission. But in a nutshell, overall, electrons are happy in their ground state if they absorb energy from an explosion or you put them in a flame because that flame is this combustion and it's releasing a lot of energy especially thermal energy um, uh, the electron in its ground state can absorb some energy and jump up into a higher excited state and it can't stay there forever boy you can't hold this smile for forever it gets really exhausting <laughs> right i want to get back to my ground state where i look kind of like this and so as that uh, higher excited uh, electron settles back down to its ground state, it releases a photon of light. It has to release that energy uh, in the form of a photon of light that we can see in the visible range. So that's basically how fireworks work, is when you watch fireworks exploding, you're actually seeing electrons that got excited relaxing back down into their ground state.